that adversity makes us tougher. Having to face things, having to go through things makes us tougher if the person goes through it, you know, whereas the ones who don't, and that's, it's not, it's not, it's not static, right? It's dynamic because there are many things that, I mean, I think I probably told you the first time around, I was a victim through most of my story. I consider, I, I look back now and see that I had cultivated a victim mindset almost my entire life. And for a long time though, it made me gritty. It was my armor. It was my defense until later where it became my prison, you know, and I really wasn't able to sort of break out from it. And that's when I realized that I had become a prisoner to my victim mindset and I had to overcome that. And that was a decision. And that's what brings me to who I am now, you know, but at the same time, like there, there were times in a great deal of my life where I feel like I was just coward in the corner saying, don't hurt me. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting thing. Let's dive into that, if you don't mind, because that's something that a lot of people find themselves within, a victim mindset of so many different things. So I'm a victim of my social class. I'm a victim of my race. I'm a victim of, you know, my my parenting style. I'm a victim of this, that, this, that, the other. Everyone's a victim. That's their identity. That's their label. That's how they introduce themselves. Oh, I'm a victim of this, you know, uh, disease, whatever, whatever. What do you think was what brought you into feeling that way and kind of resonating with that victim mentality? And what made you realize you had to switch it? And what, like, how did you kind of switch into a more empowered responsibility taking mindset? Um, you know, I can actually trace this to exact moment. And it was that when I was six years old, my dad left. Now, I grew up on an island. This was not an after school special, all right? He probably lived a mile down the road, but my mom was not capable of loving or caring for me. And so that was something I grew up real fast. And about a year later, though, uh, she gave me up to my dad, who then we went and moved in with his fiance and her two daughters, and we got thrown out the next morning. So I got thrown out of two houses by two moms in 24 hours. And if that doesn't fuck you up as a seven-year-old, I don't know what does. But dad, who was in recovery, you know, spent the better part of the next decade and a half making his own way through the world. And he would often vent his frustrations out on me. So as a young kid, I often was made to feel a burden, felt like I wasn't good enough. Um, and a lot of people will kind of have that fear of rejection growing up and they'll use it to become like perfectionists and you know they want everybody to love them i went the other way i said fuck you i don't need your love and so i started to i had a like a side hustle in the second grade i created this tough exterior for myself you know i wasn't like there was nothing like physically powerful about me so i was a wise ass i was sarcastic just always acted like this tough kid who who didn't need you and so that did stay with me for a long time as I grew up. And the thing is, is that he is tough as I wanted to pretend I was growing up thinking it's me against the world. You can't feel it's you against the world unless you're a victim of the world. There's the paradox. You've been victimized of the world. Therefore, you are always on guard against the world. It's me against the world. I didn't realize this at the time, though, because, again, it, it gave me this grittiness. So when I got cancer for the first time, I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want anyone feeling sorry for me. I didn't want anybody's sympathy. But again, what I didn't realize is that I was still feeling victimized by cancer. I talk about it in my book. I talk about it in my keynote, how that first night I went home and I'm staring in the mirror and I've got like puffy eyes and red cheeks. And I'm just looking back at this scared little kid whimpering to God, please, why? And I got mad and I looked back and I said, fuck you, fuck you. And I started screaming at the top of my lungs, my poor neighbors. All right. I'm beating on my chest, like, come and get me cancer. I just, I like threw a temper tantrum and I became defiant within those couple hours because I did not like seeing that I was a victim, that I was this helpless victim. And I said, no, I'm not. What I hadn't realized though, that I hadn't changed my mindset. This was just the same thing, this tough exterior that I was putting on for this show. And it took all the things that I told you about already that I went through, everything from the cancer, the diabetes, all right, I lost my mom, I lost my sister. And about seven months after I had been obstacle course racing, everything was awesome. Mind, body, spirit was progressing. Work was going good. I was really enjoying this stuff. And that's when I was in my second car accident where I got more herniated discs and nerve damage. 
my Jeep was badly, uh, badly injured, was uh, <laughs> hurt, whatever, damaged. There you go. Um, the woman who hit me died. And although I was just sitting at a red light when she was hitting me full speed, the last thing that happened in her life was me. That night, my cat died of 12 years. I had nerve damage from the injury, from the accident that I didn't know what it was. And I, I found myself lying on the couch again, just wanting to give up. And I was trying to get myself back into it. And I was trying to train and I just was flat. And I was listening to some motivational video or some dudes yelling, do you want to be a victim or a survivor? Victim or survivor? And I'm like, these choices suck. <laughs> and I was like, what's the point? What's the point? I've been a survivor my whole life. And here I am still just barely surviving with more bad shit happening. What is the point of this? And so I got mad, really mad, just like that time in Milford. And I threw a temper tantrum and I was like, there's no point. I am not a survivor. I am a warrior and I am going to war. I will not be defined by my adversity, but rather my triumph over it. I will do shit that diabetics should not. I will live every day to stick the middle finger up to cancer. I will be I will recover from alcohol and I'll help other people recover from alcohol. I'll not let sleep apnea ever prevent me from doing the things that I want to do in my life. Whatever it is that stands in front of me, that's what I'm going to overcome. And that's where the mindset came from as I realized I had been a victim all that time that I hadn't overcome any of my adversity. I had only survived it and surviving isn't enough. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people out there, whether they have a particular ailment that they can name or are just existing amongst their circumstances, they're living in that kind of survival mindset of, hey, I just I have to get through the day. Oh, I just have to get through the week. Oh, I just have to get through the month, through the year, through the decade. And then these are the people that before they know it, they are, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. And they really haven't made anything of their life, especially anything that they ever wanted to, to feel fulfilled inside. And that's why I always promote thriving or, or focusing on thriving rather than surviving. Because what does thriving actually mean? Well, thriving means within your current circumstances and your current reality, you are going to make the best moves that you possibly can to be as optimal as you can and, and move forward and thrive, not just survive and get through the day, but seize the day. And that different perspective goes hand in hand with having an empowered mindset versus that victim mindset and that mentality. And it's one that sets you up to start forming the good habits that spiral into good habits, that spiral into good days, into good weeks, into good months. And that's, um, you know, it's really the fundamental foundation for positive change in life. If you enjoyed this clip, you'll love the full conversation I had with Nick, where we dive deeper into overcoming adversity and developing mental toughness and resiliency. It's a great conversation, so click the link in the description to check it out.